Hi guys, welcome back to the channel for another video. Today's video is completely inspired by you guys. If not for your messages over on Instagram, I wouldn't have even known that this was a thing. I checked my message requests in the last 24 hours and I could see this running theme of BBC, BBC, BBC. And the one that really caught my attention was F the effing BBC or something like that. So I knew that I had to check out what you guys were talking about and asking for a response to. And it seems that BBC Two in the UK aired a show very recently recently called The Restaurant That Burns Off Calories. So title alone knew this was one that was worth looking into. I acquired the show by less than above board means because I'm not in the UK. I don't have a BBC license. And fortunately, that means that the majority of people outside of the UK are not going to be able to see this program, which I don't think could possibly benefit anyone. But it's certainly not beneficial to those with a predisposition to eating disorders, a history of eating disorders who are currently dealing with an eating disorder or who have a predisposition to disordered eating and disordered exercise. So my recommendation is not just for people with those vulnerabilities to not watch it. It's just not a really worthwhile thing for anyone to watch. It's, it's just not terribly beneficial. So the premise of the show is that 20 unassuming restaurant goers are invited to a restaurant, lovely, are provided with a lovely meal, wonderful. Unknown to them, there is a gym next door with people working off what they are consuming. So whatever calorie amount their food equates to is what these other people are burning off adjacent to the restaurant. And that's when this show got its first, oh no, from me. This is one of the most disordered shows that I have probably seen in some time, which is really disheartening because you think you're making this progress and then something like this makes it to not just production stage, but they release it. So the premise is terrible. The execution is terrible. Obviously, the timing is terrible in a pandemic when we've got so much food anxiety and weight related anxiety and people who are really just throwing out tidal waves of disordered messaging. I don't know if everyone at the BBC was very drunk throughout the production process, but I just don't know how this got to be released, particularly in the current climate. At the end of the show, it's then revealed to the restaurant goers that there is this gymnasium with all of these people working off what they've eaten, and they're essentially asked whether or not they think it would be helpful to provide calorie information at restaurants and potentially to even advise restaurant goers what they need to do to burn off the food that they're consuming. So obviously the most damaging message within this program is that food has to be compensated for, that food needs to be burnt off, that energy consumption is not about survival or God forbid enjoyment, that we need to use exercise in a punitive way, that we need to essentially punish ourselves and put ourselves in a position of feeling obligated to burn off the food that we're consuming. Forgetting the fact that we all need food to survive. They claim that the purpose of the show was to educate people about calories and the latest research about how they function. I think that most adults know what calories are, but thank you anyway for this redundant, uh, really poorly executed education. But what people were left with was that certain food choices were shamed and that there was a follow-up message of, now you're going to have to do this to work it off. This is something that I tell clients all the time. That That is the message that, you know, energy equals weight gain, energy equals bad, food equals fat. That's not how the human body uses energy. It's called energy for a reason. It's fuel. It's like you fill up your car with petrol. You don't then just drive it around to be like, oh, I got to burn off all this petrol. I got to get this fuel out of the car. You use it. You conduct your life. You do the necessary things. And oh my God, what a premise. You then use it to enjoy your life as well and get you to certain places where you can be with your friends and be with your family. Obviously, this is a bad example given we're all in quarantine and you can't do that right now. The human body requires energy for precisely the same reason so that you can live your life. It is not there for you to think, oh God, I ate that and now I've got to work it off. Now I've got to burn it off. I'm not saying that movement doesn't have a place in a balanced lifestyle. Of course it does, but not for punitive punishing reasons, not to compensate. When all those things are in balance, they each have their own place. One doesn't cancel the other out. Your body needs food to survive. Your body needs a variety of food to survive. 
There's also the fact that we know that if we have a restrictive mentality around the kinds of foods that we eat, that we end up with this behavior pendulum where we restrict, we restrict, we restrict, whether it's mentally telling ourselves, I can't have that, or that's bad, or I would have to burn that off or work that off. What then happens? The pendulum swings all the way the other way, and we can very often end up in binging cycles and developing this extreme rigidity and chaos combination with our eating disorder behaviors. Guys, I see it all the time with my clients. They come to me and they say, I binge and I want to get rid of my binging. And I'm like, great, let's talk about restriction. And they're like, why? And I'm like, because very often, even if, and this applies if you have binge eating disorder, this applies if you have bulimia, OSFED, people think I'm just talking about certain diagnoses when I talk about this. And they're like, why don't you talk about binge eating disorder? Guys, this it all applies and can apply to each diagnosis. If you have a restrictive mentality, that can very often play out as if you have a physical restriction with food, that pendulum will swing all the way the other way. And once you work on your relationship with food, you give yourself permission to have food, you let go of the idea that you have to compensate, punish yourself, make up for it, that exercise is there to burn off calories and you get your relationship with movement into alignment and the way you think about food, the way you talk to yourself, the way that you treat yourself, your attitudes towards all these categories and all those things come into balance, pendulum stops. It settles in this nice safe space in the middle. There's a number that I stumbled across that really helped me when I was in recovery that I now share with people because I think it's so important as a reaction to this messaging of what you eat, you must burn. Food has to be compensated for and totally leaving out the importance of a diverse, free, total permission given relationship with food. And that is 20%. When I found out that the human brain needs 20% of what we eat every day just to function, it completely blew apart all of these diet culture notions and messages that I had been fed just like this one, that food turns to fat, that food, certain foods have to be compensated for or made up for or are bad and others are good. Uh, it completely blew that apart because it told me that I could have this diverse range of foods and needed them for my brain to function. The brain needs glucose to function. That's carbohydrates, right? How much are carbohydrates demonized? in diet culture, in programs like this. So if the brain needs 20%, what's happening to that other 80%? Is that just automatically going to your thighs? You better get on the treadmill. No, it's going to your cardiovascular system. It's going to your central nervous system, to your respiratory system, to your organs, to your senses, to your ability to put your arms around your loved ones. Again, bad example. You can't do that right now, but you know what I mean. I think the messaging that we see in recovery communities and in intuitive eating communities even stops to early when we start with the whole like food is important it's energy your body needs it yes it is a necessity it also can be enjoyable particularly in the context that they were totally messing with in this program going out to a restaurant an enjoyable culinary social experience we are social animals we connect socially over food Food can also be an expression of love and care. It's not a replacement for it. It's not a replacement for comfort and good feelings, but it can be a contributor to it. Like when my dad was sick, I would drive miles to go and get him a Big Mac if at the drop of a hat, that's what he felt like. Or I would go everywhere looking for the right ingredients for a green chicken curry, which was hard to do in like Massachusetts. But that was my way of showing him how much I love him amongst other things. I wasn't just making him food and being like, that's it. That's all you get. That's my love. There's one more important point that I want to make in response to people who tend to find these videos that I do response videos discussing mainstream media and irresponsible messages when it comes to the disordered eating population, the eating disorder sufferer population who say, not everyone has these issues and why should they have to be babied or taken into special consideration? You know, there, there are people who this wouldn't impact. It's not my problem that you have a history of an eating disorder or whatever. And that's totally fair. As an individual, you absolutely don't have to care that I had an eating disorder or that other people have eating disorders or that there's, you know, so many people out there with disordered eating relationships and disordered exercise relationships. Totally. As an individual, no problem. But that's not who these videos are 
geared towards. It's geared towards people who are ethically and morally obligated to take into consideration that in Australia alone, more than 12% of people are currently suffering with eating disorders. You can take that statistic and pretty much replicate it in most areas around the world, the UK being one of them. Not to mention because eating disorders are so poorly funded and the research is not extensive enough, 12% is a probably not an accurate figure. It's likely much higher. In addition to that, you have people suffering from disordered eating. So they don't necessarily have eating disorders, but it's a similarly painful, dangerous experience process and can lead to similar outcomes. Eating disorders kill more people than any other psychiatric illness. And we've got more than one in 10 in the population suffering from them, likely much higher than that. So yes, corporations like BBC are obligated morally and ethically to take into consideration who they're disseminating this information to and who they're putting in danger. Someone developing an eating disorder can be as simple as them engaging in some disordered eating or some disordered exercise because they have a predisposition that they didn't choose, that they have no control over, something as simple as very brief calorie restriction or overexercise can trigger a deadly eating disorder. And just as somebody with cancer who has a vulnerability to developing cancer can't choose that vulnerability, neither can those of us with a vulnerability or a predisposition to eating disorders and disordered eating. So that's why I make these response videos. That's why I want to reach the people who might be affected by it and hopefully to reach the corporations who continue to kind of just refuse to dig a bit deeper and to maybe educate themselves and maybe put a little bit of time and effort into seeking out people with lived experience, taking responsibility for how that could, in a very real, very life-threatening way, impact a reasonable portion of the population. This attitude towards food and exercise is not normal. Just because it's common doesn't mean it's normal. It's not the only option just because you know, the average person without disordered eating or eating disorder predispositions thinks it's okay, you can aim for much better than this. This is not the solution to disliking your body or, you know, having concerns about how you interact with food or movement. There are ways to develop a very balanced, all-inclusive relationship with food, relationship with movement, relationship with yourself. And programs like this don't do an awful lot to spread that message, which I just wish there was more of that in mainstream media. There's a lot of it here on social media, on YouTube, which is excellent. Just doesn't seem to be jumping that wall from social media to mainstream media. And I wish it would. Food is fuel. It's enjoyable. You have permission to eat it without feeling that you have to compensate for it or do anything to kind of make up for it or burn it off. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below as always. Come and find me on Instagram and Twitter under what Mia did next. I'm doing another live on Instagram at 9 a.m. Sydney time this coming Monday, the 27th of April with Sarah Bryan from Kindful Body Mind. We're going to be talking about body image, about coping during quarantine with recovery and body image, and certainly the fat phobic messages we've been seeing everywhere. I know that Sarah has a lot to say about that. So that will be incredibly interesting. Please come and join us. Have your questions ready to go. But in the meantime, stay safe, take care, be kind. Bye guys.